You're listening to the Lux Life Discovered Podcast, where we talk with people who are living a lifestyle that reflects their passion because we believe everyone should be living their best life, their Lux Life. The show is hosted by Rick Steiner with Steiner Event Group, a premier national event planning company, and co-hosted by Shannon Richmond, the vice president of the Panama City Beach Chamber of Commerce. If you are watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications of future episodes. The show is produced by 30A Media and is broadcast on your favorite podcast outlets, as well as YouTube, Roku TV, Amazon Fire TVs, and other major brand smart TVs. I'm Rick Steiner with Steiner Event Group, the host of Lux Life Discovered. And I'm Shannon Richmond, the co-host, and I'm with the Panama City Beach Chamber of Commerce. Hello, today we have Meredith Corning with Meredith Corning PR out of Little Rock, Arkansas with us. My co-host today is Shannon Richmond, and we're glad to have both of you here today. Yes, thank you for inviting me. It's so nice to be here. Well, you're in a beautiful part of the state, that's for sure. Yes. So, so you had your first winter there. Did you have snow? Did you get to experience yeah, that? Yes, we've had snow. Um, I kind of live in a valley, so it's almost like a little winter wonderland where I live. Little deer Aww. walking around outside, and it's, yeah, it's precious. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I was telling Shannon earlier, our connection developed when um, we did a wedding at Legacy Acres, and um, we had one of her clients, which is Vibrant Occasions out of Little Rock, was the caterer. And so um, we worked with Meredith, or actually Meredith did all this. We didn't work with her. She took all of the images and then submitted them to Southern Bride as one of the publications. And they published the images from the wedding and the wow. story that Meredith wrote. That's huge. Yeah. So kind of tell us what you did before you got into the, uh, the PR part of it, because you've got a very diverse background. Yes. Um, my mother has always said that my career has been like Hansel and Gretel. I've just followed the breadcrumbs where they've led me. <laughs> and I started out working for other companies in marketing and PR capacities. And um, when I went out on my own, I was doing okay. Um, I was doing marketing, PR, event planning, event planning, First started out more sort of on the corporate side, fashion shows and fun things like that. Um, but I got the wedding bug for about 10 years, became a wedding planner. So I really drifted away from um, a lot of my freelance work doing marketing and PR and, and wedding planning sort of took over my life. And then in 2020, as with a lot of us, I made the decision to go back to my roots and get back into freelance PR. And, and so here I am and I've got a packed client list and I love it. And yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm doing what I love. What more can you ask for? That's true. So when you went up or brought on your first PR client, so yeah. tell us about that. Like when you're starting your own PR firm, cause that's not, easy job to begin with, you know? So yeah. what, what was it like when you had your first client? What do you remember about the, not the struggles necessarily, but just, you know, everything that goes with that first client? I uh, well, when I, when I started my freelance PR career, this was back in probably 2011 or 12. And I, I wouldn't really say I had my own PR firm at that time. I was just sort of freelancing. Okay. So I I got a, a fashion designer client, was actually my first PR client, um, just an independent fashion designer in Little Rock, Arkansas. And we started working together and I learned a lot, you know, back then. But when I did it legitimately and started Meredith Corning PR in 2020, um, what the difference was, I guess, was that I had more contacts this time because mm. I had been in the wedding industry and the fashion industry for a really long time. And so there was a very stark difference between when I started out in 2012, you know, kind of piddling with it to really legitimately starting my PR company in 2020. I just knew more people right. and I was lucky because I literally just put it on my personal Facebook page. Hey guys, I'm going to start my own PR firm. I'm opening it up. If you are looking for PR, reach out to me. And it was actually the catering company that did the wedding with you was the first person to reach out to me and say, what are you doing? Oh. <laughs> what are you 
look at how that works. Yeah. Well, and they're the the Vibrant Occasions, the catering company is, I mean, they are just amazing. Their they presentation are. at their events is is on point, the, and the food tastes as great as it looks. So okay, so I lived in Memphis, Tennessee, for about two years back in this would have been like 2016, 2017, and I was working for a company called the Pink Bride, and they do a big wedding show in the state of Tennessee, and they have a magazine, and I was actually meeting with Tess to sell her an ad for the magazine. That's how we met. Okay. Uh, and we were we were having coffee and we were talking and she told me she worked for the state. And then we went on and talked about fashion and bridal fashion and you know kind of what she was doing with her business and by the end of the conversation she said, "Now do you want to know what I really do?" And I said, oh, well, yeah." yeah. This is and she said, "I'm actually an FBI agent." Yeah, I, I was I was surprised. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, so you're like a bad, you know? Like, well, like, well, they're what? Yeah, like they are some cold people, aren't they? <laughs> but we just really hit it off. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love her. Like she's so cool and she's so creative and she's really into fashion. And so we stayed, we stayed connected. And when I decided to go full-time PR, she was actually the second client to reach out to me. I've followed her on Instagram since we met and um, she does some amazing high-end bridal gowns and really works with some of the better boutiques and clients across the country. So she does. And she has her own boutique in Tennessee um, and she carries international bridal designers wow. at her store. So like things that you wouldn't normally find at certain bridal salons, you can, you can find really interesting, unique pieces there. And I've told Meredith about Margaret Ellen Bridal oh, here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I think that might be a good connection. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, who knows where that will lead. So, and that's yeah. one thing about networking with different people. You um, open up doors or create possibilities or opportunities that, you know, sometimes it would take years to make that connection mm -hmm. or you may not ever make that connection, mm -hmm. but it's easy to... Right to see what can develop with, with different things. And so one thing I wanted to do whenever I started this was have kind of a slower lifestyle. And that was a big question for me, like how many clients do I actually want to take on? So I've had three that keep me very, very busy. And I've recently taken on a four. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I have a question. So the four people that you have as clients, are they all different industries? Are they the same type? So they, that's a good question. Actually, all four of them are in the wedding industry, but okay. the fourth one that I took on, I'm not working on her wedding business currently. She was recently featured in a documentary on Netflix and I've known her forever. She's a friend of mine and I'm just helping her with the publicity that stemmed from the documentary that she was in and now the advocacy work that she is doing that from that documentary. So I actually don't have anything to do with her, her wedding photography business. She's a photographer, um, but I'm not helping her with that. Can you mention something else that she was involved with recently or can we go she, there? She was in a documentary on Netflix. But I mean, on the talk show. Oh, yeah. you mean the Tamron Hall show? She got invited to go on the Tamron Hall show. Um, and so I got to work with the Netflix PR team and um, the Tamron Hall PR team. And that was very exciting to be able to work with such big names like that. And what great yeah. networking for you for in the future, too, to know who all they are now. Yes. That's awesome. Thanks. So working with the two different, because that's two different teams. I mean, and I'm sure, you know, when you work with some teams, there's a little conflict, one wants to override the other, that type thing. Did you have any issues with that or were they all pretty much on the same page? Not at all. Like they are the nicest people I have ever met. They have been so gracious. Um, and in fact, after the documentary came out, I wanted to get my client published on Rolling Stone, but I did ask them 
I said, do, is it okay for me to do this? Like, is this something that y'all want to do? Or, or, you know, do I have permission to do it? And they were like, no, 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 go ahead, pitch away, pitch her anywhere. And I'm like, <laughs> so That's, um, yeah. they, they gave me full, you know, hey, go do what you need to do for your client, which was great. Well, that is, that, it does allow you a lot of freedom. And it's just like when she contacted me and asked, you know, would you want to submit? Well, it's like, let me think about it. Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, but um, can you talk about your other other magazines and publications that you submit to and kind of give us a little, because you've got a good diverse group there and a very high end group. So how did all that, you know, how did you get that established? I do it the old fashioned way. I reach out usually by email um, and I've made connections over the years. Sometimes it takes a lot of research. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I lean on other PR pros to help me, you know, find placement for a particular, you know, whatever we're pitching, whether it's a campaign or a real wedding or a story of some kind. Um, so yeah, di different ways we do that. It's a lot of research. I'll put it that way. Yeah. So you're like me, you're like the old fashioned like I like person to person. Like yes, I, I'm yeah. the same way. And, you know, I want yeah. that personal connection because I feel like if I can get in front of someone, I can sell myself, you know, rather than right. just being on a, like on an email yeah, link absolutely. and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. How, <laughs> you know, you've been featured in some pretty high end and notable magazines. So uh, tell us a few of who those are and that type thing. Oh, well, um, Southern Bride. Yes, yes, we like Southern <laughs> Bride. <laughs> um, so, yeah, a lot, of the, a lot of the, you know, bridal magazines, some of the national ones are like Inside Weddings. That's a really good one. Mm -hmm. um, Mod Wedding is a really good one. Um, I mean, there's so many, there's so many. And then, and then I work with some on a local level, like here in Arkansas, we have Arkansas Bride, we have right. Weddings in Arkansas that is also a really beautiful um, magazine in its own right too. Um, and then outside of that, you know, I do like to tell my clients stories. And so sometimes I'll look for more entrepreneurial type magazines or just magazines that, and, and websites that will tell entrepreneurs stories, you know, from various angles. So I'm kind of all over the place with it. Just wherever we can get some publicity, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. always yeah. at that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's better to be all over the place and to be locked into one, you know, one or Absolutely. two different publications. And then you're kind of at their mercy on whether you're published or not. You know, that sure. type of thing. Right. So, right. So what publication is like the ultimate goal for you? or media of some kind? What, what would be like, if you achieved that, you would be like, dang, that was impressive. <laughs> well, you know, I, I would have said Vogue, but we've actually, we actually got tests in British Vogue a few years ago. So. Oh, really? I've done so, yeah. <laughs> well, there you yeah. go. So, <laughs> well, so Fashion Week in New York, have you ever, have you been there? Have you ever thought about covering that? Especially like, I don't know if Tess has done New York yet, but you know, that would be yeah. a great experience. That would be. And I've been invited several times, but I've I've never gone. You know, my I have a a 14-year-old daughter and a 20-year-old daughter. So okay. I feel like I'm just kind of now getting to a place in my life where I could go travel and do things like that. Well, I uh, went to Fashion Week several years ago and um, went with the one of the judges from America's Next Top Model. And um, we got name invited, to, I know, but I'm not going to say a name, but we got <laughs> invited to everything that was like the, the, you know, just what everybody wanted to go to. And I would hate yeah. to go again because I wouldn't be at that level. And then it'd just be like a normal person, you know? So, but it, it's such an Ignore experience. Me. Right, right. <laughs> They'd be like, you're who? No, so, but it is a great experience for sure. And yeah, I think Arkansas, we used to have a little fashion show in Arkansas, Fashion Week, but um, I guess with we COVID, did. yeah, they've not done that. So, but yeah, I used to have one in Little Rock. Yeah. 
We so. did, yeah. Uh, Brandon Campbell headed that up exactly. for several. Exactly. Yes, that's right. Yeah. I think he's. I think he's moved on to greener pastures, though. I think he's still within the entertainment industry, but he's, <laughs> he's, he's somewhere. Doing it's something. so exciting to to hear how you're helping all these people's businesses. I mean, isn't it so rewarding for you? What's the biggest yeah. reward you've gotten out of doing all of this? Um, that's probably hard, huh? It is hard because like I, I always like to celebrate the little wins too. Yeah. You know, I mean, every time I get someone some publicity, whether it's, you know, online or in a magazine or an influencer shout out or campaign or whatever, like I like to celebrate every small win. But, Absolutely. You know, yeah. And I mean, I, you know, I've kind of got it in my head that like, if, if I want to grow and cause if I, if the best client or the most amazing client came to me, it would be hard for me to turn them away. So right. I've, I've got that in my head right now and I'm working on corralling some people. And oh. so I've got people that are like writing for me and that I talk to quite frequently and um, that I trust. And so if, if it did come to be that someone came to me and I just could not pass them up, <laughs> I, do, I do have some people waiting in the wings that I could bring Good. on board to help me. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, that's nice yeah. to have that option. Yeah. Definitely. So Definitely. And then you can still do a lot of things digitally, even if they're not in Eureka Springs. So, but you know, Northwest yeah. Arkansas, you're in the prime area for, there's still so much growth in that area. And, um, it you know, is, yeah. in fact, but, um, I mean, I can take a client anywhere. I mean, I, sure. you know, yeah. you may have clients from Panama city beach calling you and from 30A and all of this area. So, yes. Uh, yeah. yes. It might be the one that you can't refuse. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So, well, good. So, um, what would you, would you do anything differently on your path that, where you are now? That would, no. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I always like it when people say no, because if anybody says, well, you know, I would have done this. We all take our paths or where they lead us. And that's what that's makes correct. us and shapes us. And so, that's you know, I used correct. to, right. I used to always like, man, I should have done this, should have done it. I'm where I am. 63. Yep doing something I never thought I would do with hosting a podcast with Shannon and um, how this started is you're welcome I re went to Sh <laughs> told Shannon one day we need to do it uh, there needs to be a podcast showcasing all of the talent because like down here in Panama City Beach and along the long 38 um, so yeah. much talent in this area yeah. so many people that have relocated or retired and moved down here and then start living their passion and they're working twice as hard but they love everything about it mm -hmm. so it's been interesting to run across you know different stories and and people and locations and so i'm um, i mentioned sh to shannon one day i said there needs to be a podcast well shannon's a person that you don't tell anything to if you don't want it to happen because like <laughs> within two days a guy called me and goes hey shannon says you're interested in starting a podcast i'm like well i said it would be a good <laughs> idea you know and now here we are but it, it's it's really great and then to have people like you that have have you know to follow their passion and yeah. they're living their living their life. Their we say living life. their best life. Their best their life. life, yes, life. definitely. Yeah. 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 So, well, good. So, uh, what 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 do you do when you're not busy working for everybody else? Like when you have your downtime. You really want to know? No, I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> she's an FBI agent. <laughs> right, right, right. I am coming after you. Yes, yeah, she wants um, the tests. Yeah. Um, Right. No, um, <laughs> my husband and I have a Harley Davidson okay. and we go riding now every weekend now that we don't have weddings to do on the weekends. Right. Um, it's my uh -huh. favorite thing to do. It is beautiful up here with all of the mountains. There's so many back roads and beautiful places to see. Right. Uh, and I, I was not on board with a motorcycle at uh, we're, we're going to go ride. Do you yeah. do that this weekend? Okay. Well, oh, the, cool. yeah, it's such a beautiful area where you live, like yeah. you said, because of, you have mountains, you have some flat area, but most of it's, you know, pretty mountainous and, and hilly. So we're, we're good. Yeah. 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 So are you yeah. a Razorback fan? Uh, I'm a Razorback fan. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not a big, um, I'm not a big sports person. Don't okay, <laughs> I was going to say that's that's really some strong words there. 
<laughs> being, in, being essentially being Razorback country. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We are right by the pig trail and, and all of that. So I was yeah. going to ask you about the pig trail because we used to take that coming back to college. And my parents would always say, yeah. do not take the pig trail back to family. Don't take the piggy trail. Yeah, <laughs> we always did. And yeah. So. yeah it's, it's really neat. I mean, that, but I love to work out. I mean, that's something that I have. I, I used to be a dancer back in the day. I worked for Fred Astaire Dance Company. Wow. For okay. And I'm a trained ballroom dancer and grew up, you know, tap jazz ballet like most little girls do. And I was on the dance team at my school. Um, and then, you know, I got older and kind of drifted away from, from that. But um, I've recently, in the past couple of years, started incorporating it into my daily routine, Monday through Friday. So Monday through Friday, for an hour and a half, I'm going to be in my dance room, and I'm going to be working out and dancing and just trying to live a healthy life. I'm not getting right. any younger. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, that is awesome. And also, does it, don't you find that it allows you to be more creative once you get back yeah. to what you love? Um, and so for me, it's a big release of energy and I just, I need that. I need that to be able to relax and unwind the rest of the night. Sure. And you brought yeah. out a good point that most people who are, aren't self-employed don't understand, especially if they work from home, there's never that Escape. end time. <laughs> yeah, because right. you wake right. up thinking about it, you go to bed thinking about it. And they also think, oh, you work for yourself, so you've got the best hours ever. Well, they don't see the three or clock morning nights that you're, you're up all night trying right. to get a deadline or, you know, right. working around different time zones, that type thing. So yeah, makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I call my dance room my portal because I'm like, okay, I go in there <laughs> and I put myself into my evening self. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Well, that, that's great. Well, of course, working down in Panama City Beach a uh, week a month, it's, it's nice. Uh, my wife always thought, well, you're down there, you're at the beach. And so she's been with me several times and she realizes she's on the beach all day by herself. But I fail to make it to the beach because I'm working. So I don't get to, you know, go. It's not like I'm here on vacation, but <laughs> we're going to make make some beach time soon, though. So, yeah. Well, thanks. I don't feel like I'm very good at social media. That's the one thing I always feel behind on is social media. Oh, we ought to be 63 and try. You know, it's kind of <laughs> like people are talking about doing things and the reels and all that. I'm like, I just was made a post. I'm happy. You know, so it's like, much. <laughs> so. It is so much. I mean, I feel like social media has really become one of those things where you need like someone to just do that at this point. It has just become such a big deal. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. there's a lady that does cakes here in Panama City Beach, and she um, she does the most clever little post and on her story, all those oh, little yeah. emojis and stuff. And oh, I'm just yeah. like, where did where did you how did you know to do that? Yeah. So yeah. I need like a, a we need a person. We need well, we do. We, we need, need a class. Person. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, but yeah. So uh, I I appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was fun. Well, good, Shannon. Have you want to say anything to wrap it up? I'm or? just super excited to um, go watch that Netflix show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she's responsible Please for it. I know. Yeah. Yeah, That's I know. crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, it is amazing, you know, because you think when you're, you know, people think of Arkansas and they think, okay, there's not much going on there. But Arkansas has a ton of just some of the key players in our country, to be honest with you, because yeah. Northwest Arkansas, you're close to Bentonville and Fayetteville. And of course, Bentonville is Walmart country and you have all right. the different interests that the Walton family is involved with. You have J.B. Hunt, the trucking firm is wow. there. You have Tyson Chicken. So there's some major a lot players. Of entrepreneurs. There's a lot of, there uh, are. there's a very entrepreneurial spirit here. Right. And one of the yeah. nicest airports in the country that most people don't realize. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. that's that was a big thing years ago. I remember when the airport was built there and people were like, well, why would we need something that nice in, in Northwest Arkansas? And then you're like, well, there's a reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but we do appreciate your time so much today. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all for having me on, Shannon. It's nice to meet you too. All right. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right.
check out Lux Life Discovered on Facebook and Instagram and on 30a.tv. See you next time on Lux Life Discovered.